Yeah, thank you very much for the nice introduction. Oh, sorry. Let me go back to tweets. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, first of all, I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to give this talk. Um, my talk won't be directly on wireless, but uh, reinforcement learning as a powerful technique can have a lot of applications in wireless, such as what we have heard in the past talk. So um, this in this work, I'm going to talk about the multitask representation learning in reinforcement learning. So this is a joint work with a visiting student, uh, Yuan Chen, who is from USTC, and my postdoc, Song Tao Feng from uh, Ohio State, and Professor Jin Yang from Penn State, and Professor Hong Zhang from USTC. So let me start with um, the definition of the Markov, uh, Markov decision process that we work on. So essentially here, uh, the S and A are the state and action spaces, and we consider episodic uh, MDP, so basically sample are collected by uh, episodes. So we assume R represents the reward, and across each time in the episode, the reward can change. And same for the uh, transition kernel. So for each different time step, the transition kernel can be different. So we basically consider a homogeneous MDP. And we use pi, policy pi, to represent the uh, strategy that the agent takes. So uh, since the MDP is homogeneous over the episode, so the policy can also be uh, in that way. So pi can change over the time step. So we define the value function in terms of uh, the cumulative reward uh, from current time H up to the end of the episode. So basically in this work, we will be interested in the summation of the reward over the entire episode when we start the H from one. And similarly, we can define the state action value function, um, basically the summation of the reward over the SA. So in this work, we are interested in the transition kernel that can be represented by a so-called low rank model. So essentially this transition probability can be decomposed into the feature vector phi and the linear weight mu. So we typically call this phi as a feature vector that captures a feature over S and A, and this mu captures a feature over S prime. So we assume uh, the feature has a dimension D over here. It has been uh, shown widely in RL that such a low rank model can approximate the underlying transition very well. So in this work, we are going to consider both the upstream training and the downstream training. So that in upstream, we basically consider the pre-training over T tasks. And for each task, the transition kernel can be expressed in this low rank model. And further, all of these tasks share this common representation over here. So it has also been verified widely in practice that when, when we have similar tasks in RL, they tend to share the common representation. So that's why we capture it in this uh, common representation in the multitask training. And then in the downstream, we assume we are given a target task, which we call as T plus one task. And this task will also share the common representation with the upstream tasks. And so that we hope to get uh, some benefit from learning from the pre-training of the multitask model. So this figure captures uh, the entire framework that we consider. So basically in the upstream, we have T tasks and we want to uh, train these tasks use multitask learning and hopefully to get a reasonable representation estimator. And then in the downstream, we are going to use such a representation estimator to get certain benefit in the downstream design. So basically our goal for the multitask upstream is going to maximize this summation of the value functions over the T-tasks over all the joint policies over the T-tasks. 
And also we would like to find a representation estimator, hopefully accurate enough. And then in the downstream, we are given a target task and we hope to apply this pre-trained representation and then maximize the value function for the new task. So here are the open questions we address in this work. So in the upstream, we would like to design algorithm to achieve efficiency gain compared with a single task RL training. So here the data we collected should, should jointly among the tasks. And then the challenge is that the representation learning and the data collection are in fact intertwined. So basically we have a representation estimator and then we use it to uh, uh, design an exploration policy to collect the data. And once we have more data, we should be able to refine the representation estimator and so on. So it's going to be an iterative process. And then uh, in the downstream, we would like to apply the learned representation from the upstream and hope to achieve efficiency gain compared to the case if we don't have such a pre-training and the representation estimator. So here the main challenge that we need to address is the data distribution mismatch between the task and between the target and source tasks. So here is a summary of the, uh, of the contribution that we make in this work. So in the upstream, so we do a multitask representation learning and we design such an algorithm which we call as refuel. So basically refuel will leverage the shared representation across source tasks in order to improve learning efficiency. And also refuel will give a fairly well uh, estimated representation. And in terms of the sample complexity, we have shown that the benefit of multitask learning can indeed be obtained as long as the number of tasks is above a certain threshold, which turns out to be quite reasonable. And in downstream, we hope to apply the pre-trained representation in order to de design sample efficient algorithms for both online and offline RL settings. And we, we have shown that such a, uh, by using such a pre-trained representation, we indeed have improved the suboptimality gap compared with the case when we don't have the knowledge of representation. So next, I'm going to talk about these results in more detail. So first of all, in the upstream training, so basically multitask training, so the refuel algorithm will first take a step, which is called MLE Oracle. So here we basically use maximum, maximum likelihood estimation in order to provide the estimation of the uh, representation as well as the linear rates. So this is going to be jointly over the T tasks as you have seen from this uh, expression. And we have shown that such a multitask MLE guarantee is as follows. So this form basically capture the estimation error, which is p hat, with respect to the ground truth transition kernel for the task T. And then if we sum them together, this basically gave us a total estimation error um, uh, across all T tasks, which is founded by this form. So here this phi and psi represents the classes that we select the feature and the linear model. So to give you a, uh, uh, some idea about uh, what we can get for the single task case, basically we can train these uh, transition kernels. We can learn these transition kernels across the, uh, uh, by individual tasks. And if we, if we do that and doesn't explore the common uh, representation, then the bound that we have will take such a form. So clearly, if you compare these two, you can see that we get a benefit over here with a factor of t in terms of this cardinality of the function class for the representation. So this is reasonable because they all share the common representation. So we should have some sample gain in terms of that. 
Okay, so then after learn, after we have a certain estimate, estimation for the representation, then we, we would like to use it for the design of an exploration to further refine such an estimation. So let's view this B hat as the uncertainty that still lies in estimating this uh, transition kernel. And then a natural scheme to take to design such an exploration, we'll be adding this uncertainty together as, across all the tasks and al also the time, uh, time indexes. If we, did it, if we do it this way, then you'll immediately realize such a value function has a decomposed form into individual tasks. So this will mean that the exploration won't be jointly over the key tasks. So in order to uh, encourage the joint uh, exploration among these tasks, so what we do is to change this L1, L1 type of reward form into the L1, L2 form. In particular, we take the L2 form of this uncertainty over the tasks. So in this way, these tasks are coupled together. And turns out that such a designed value function can indeed motivate a joint design of the policies over these tasks so that we get that joint uh, benefit. So let me be a little bit more specific about this uh, uncertainty. So basically, once we have the estimator of the feature, so we can calculate this empirical covariance matrix. And from that, we can estimate this uncertainty based on this uh, feature estimation, as well as the empirical covariance matrix. So, so in this way, this B hat, in fact, serves as a uncertainty level to guide the exploration. So basically, whenever there is an uncertainty, we would like to encourage to uh, collect more samples over that space so that those samples will be very helpful to reduce the uncertainty in the estimation. So that's kind of the idea. So once we have this well-designed uh, exploration-driven reward, we can maximize such a reward jointly over the policies to collect the samples. So finally, if this uncertainty of the reward is less than a certain threshold, then we basically want to uh, ex uh, exit the algorithm and give the output. So this theorem summarizes uh, the theoretical analysis on such a uh, such an algorithm. So here we want to achieve two goals. First, we want to make the estimation of this transition kernel as accurate as possible. So epsilon u represent how accurate we can reach the ground truth uh, transition kernel. And secondly, we want to get the near optimal policies for all the t tasks with as less sample as possible. So this theorem basically says by achieving these two goals, this review algorithm requires the number of trajectories that can be at most in this bound. So let me uh, explain these three terms a little bit. So the first term, in fact, captures the benefit from the joint MLE estimator. And the second term captures how many samples we actually need to uh, have the concentration of empirical covariance matrix to be estimated uh, good enough. And then the last term guarantees the model estimation uh, error for each task is small enough. So with this, we can compare with the case if we train each task individually without exploring the shared representation. So it can be seen that such a sample complexity, in fact, is beneficial and compared to that single task training, as long as the task numbers, the number of tasks is bigger than this value. So here K is the number of actions and D is the number of the, is the dimension of the feature. So as you can see from here, it's a fairly a mild con condition on this number of tasks. So next we move on to the downstream training. 
So in order to benefit from the upstream training, then there has to be certain connections between downstream and upstream. So these uh, assumptions basically make those connections. So here, I just want to mention the last one, which is a major one. So that essentially requires the transition kernel of the target task in the downstream should not be too far away from the space that's spanned by the transition kernel of the upstream tasks with at most a C distance. So with this, we can show that for any given uh, for any given um, downstream target task, the transit as long as the transition kernel is still uh, expressed in terms of the low rank model, and then we can then it's going to be approximated well enough by uh, the uh, by the representation estimator from the upstream as well as a learned uh, linear model, with the error to be at most the C down. So this Cassi down is expressed in two uh, terms. So one represents this distance of the downstream task from the upstream task. And the second one represents the estimation error of the representation that we get from the upstream task. So then in the downstream, we really have two settings. One is the offline training and the other is online training. So in this work, we did both, but here I'm just going to focus on the offline uh, algorithm. So by offline, what we mean by uh, this is that in the downstream, we don't take um, more, we don't take active uh, samples or online samples, but we are given with certain histo historical data collected in the same environment, but based on behavior, certain behavior policy. So since the in the downstream case, the transition kernels is still uh, in the low rank model, then it can be easily show that the with the operator of this p over the over the value function, it actually takes a linear form with respect to the representation and a linear weight. In order to learn this linear weight for such a projection, then we use the uh, regularize the linear regression model. So here, this v hat is what we uh, is what we updated as a value function, and from here we basically take a linear regression to find the linear weight over here. And since this is an offline algorithm, so we need to design a certain pessimism uh, scheme in order to not be so aggressive. So this gamma represents the pessimism parameter that we designed for the offline scheme. And then we designed the update for the Q in the standard way, except here we have a gamma over here. And then we can update the value function based on the uh, state uh, action state of uh, action value function here. So in order to get a certain performance guarantee for the offline algorithm, so it's standard to have a certain coverage assumption over the offline data. And with that, uh, we get to the theorem for the downstream offline uh, sample complex uh, or sub-optimality sub guarantee. So basically this theorem says with high probability, so we can find the near optimal policy for the downstream task which has a value function that is dif dis different from the ground truth, which we call as a suboptimality gap by these uh, by by uh, by a suboptimality gap and with a sample at most with with taking at most as this type of some uh, this number of samples. So um, in fact, this is a suboptimality gap. So the first term that captures approximation error caused by applying, applying the pre-trained representation. And the second term is the estimation error in the regularized linear regression that I just introduced. Clearly from here, you can see that such a suboptimality gap uh, vanishes as this number of samples in the offline gets large. To give you some uh, idea about how this compares with uh, some state-of-the-art results, so let's see. First of all, 
suppose we have the uh, perfect uh, representation knowledge. In that case, our second term basically matches the uh, suboptimality gap in that case. So the first term basically caused by the misspecification error of the representation. And then suppose we don't have the representation knowledge at all. Then this second term will significantly improve that for the uh, for 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 the case without such a knowledge of representation. So I'm not going to get into detail for the online learning. Um, so it's going to be similar as how we design the offline, except here we we are going to we are going to be more optimistic. So to conclude, um, here we uh, explore uh, share the representation of a low rank MGPs in order to find uh, more efficient learning in the upstream and hope uh, and we have shown that such uh, upstream training can actually be transferred to the downstream training to have benefit. And then in the upstream, we design a reward free multitask RL algorithm and we propose we provided the sample complexity upper bound and we show that such a multitask representation learning is indeed beneficial compared to the single task learning. And then in the downstream offline and online RL, so we designed an algorithm that can exploit the, uh, the upstream representation estimator. And we show that uh, indeed we can get benefit by uh, using this uh, representation estimator from the upstream. So for those who are interested, uh, we have uploaded the paper to the archive and this work will also be presented in the upcoming NeurIPS conference. And thank you very much for the attention and I'm ready for questions.